Welcome back, Tampa, and we are live, and we're talking to people today who are in the headlines and making waves and inspiring conversation. Our next guest, actress Erica Alexander, landed her first movie role at just 14 years old, and for the past three decades, she's not looked back. She got her big break on The Cosby Show, playing Claire Huxtable's cousin, Pam, and then landed a career-defining role alongside Queen Latifah and Kim Fields in the 90s. Amazing show, Living Single, which by the way earned Erica two NAACP Image Awards for her portrayal as the quick witted attorney, Maxine Shaw. And Erica is continuing to build her legacy as an actress and behind the scenes trailblazer in her latest project portraying. Linda Diggs, Riz's mother, the matriarch of the Wu-Tang Clan that's come to life in Hulu's critically acclaimed Wu-Tang, an American saga. I'm telling you, the series is phenomenal. And now Erica is making headlines for her gripping new true crime podcast, Finding Tamika, where she's elevating the voices in the almost 20-year-old case of Tamika Houston, and examining the system that failed her. Tamika was 24 years old when she vanished from her home in Spartanburg, South Carolina. That was in 2004. For over a year, desperate for answers, Tamika's family clung to hope that she'd return home safely. Police eventually delivered the devastating news that she'd been murdered by a man she'd recently started dating. But even after Tamika's body was found, a question long remained for her family. Why was it a struggle to get media attention about Tamika's disappearance? It's a question making Tamika's case a rallying cry for missing black women and girls. Take a look. Tamika Houston was reported missing from her home on Harvard Drive. Tamika was gone, but her ghost would remain. When the shadows vanish, I believe we'll discover the awful truth that a black girl does not have to go missing for us not to see her. Please welcome actress, activist, two-time NAACP Image Award winner, Erica Alexander. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Thank you. Okay. I mean, we talk about you being in the headlines. You are holding the latest award that you receive for covering Tamika Houston's case. Tell us about yes, this. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, this is the DuPont Columbia Award for excellence in journalism. And I just got to give a shout out to our team, Team Tamika. We made this podcast to help raise the awareness that black girls and women who go missing, who go murdered, need to be paid attention to by the national media. So this is it. This is it. So um, um, Audible. Yeah. We did the uh, series on Audible, uh, thanks to Kevin Hart and Charlemagne the God, who championed the series, and her aunt, Rebecca Howard, and the family. Now we're here, and I'm with you. And oh, I couldn't wow. be more grateful. It is. As I said, you even, um, you received what was equivalent to the Oscar, if you will, for audio coverage as well. You're this brilliant actress. You started out as a kid in the world of acting. This evolution to what might be one of the most defining things of your career. Yes. And it has nothing to do with acting. No. But it has to do with everything that makes me, or gives me the peace of mind that I can be here talking about this with you. So I, I did start acting when I was 14 years of age. And at the time, I was grateful for the opportunity, but some of the first roles I played were um, foster child, prostitute, and a slave, in that order. And it tells you a lot about what, where they thought we should be. And um, that, I never liked that. So I started teaching myself new skill sets, started to write, eventually direct. I just directed a um, movie about reparations, the big payback, um, writing, comic books, all these other things. And that got me into activism. My mother, who is my guiding light and my love, Sammy Alexander, uh, she was orphaned twice. Both my parents were orphans. I grew up the first 11 years of my life in a hotel called Starlight off of Route 66 in Arizona. So, you know, here I am now, but 
I wouldn't be here if not for a set of circumstances that had nothing to do with me. Right. I could be missing too. So I'm doing this as my payment to her. I, I'm telling you, it, it is so, it's so real because people, you know, I've done crime shows for many, many years and people say, why do we watch what the podcast, listen to the podcast, watch? I said, because in reality we're saying, but for the grace of God, there go I. For sure. This could be me. For sure. This could be somebody I love. This could be my neighbor. And, and so when you look at Tamika's case, on one end you say, this could be me, but if the media saw her as their neighbor, as their own child, yes. it wouldn't be a headline loss. And I know that sounds like I'm on my soapbox and you know I don't like to do that, but let me get on it because I've been in the media for 30 years and we keep asking the same question. Yeah. Why does the headline have to be a young girl who is white and blonde to matter. Right. They deserve coverage too. Gabby yes. Petito's family deserve yes. that coverage. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. But so does Tamika Hudson's yes. family. Yes. Both yes. can exist. Yes. You yes. know how many times I've been in the newsroom and they say, what, we don't have any stories. I'm like, you got plenty. Yes, you do. So they both deserve, both families deserve to have that answer. What happened to my child? What happened to my child? And you're exploring that. <clears throat> yes, it's called missing white woman syndrome. Yeah. The great Gwen Ifill talked about this before she passed away and she coined that phrase, unfortunate phrase. And so it just means that Tamika Houston is the photo negative of what you're talking about. She's um, a person that they're not looking for. There is no media coverage, that, usually nationally. But because Tiffany Cross was at America Most Wanted, there was a woman who looked like her who said, this could be me, took it to her producers, got the opportunity to talk about it. But for months and months and months beforehand, that was not the case. Uh, and uh, we had John Walsh on our show when we talked about um, this, this continued problem in the media. And he even admits early on, he had to reset his mind to say, this cannot continue to happen and used his show to help change that. And our friend Tiffany Cross was a part of that. Come on. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, and we're, we're talking about changing systemic bias and prejudice. It doesn't just belong in institutions of financial. We talk about uh, reparations and things like that. It talks about image. What is the image? I have a company called Color Farm, and we talk about rebranding blackness. Rebranding blackness so you see her as a person who needs help, not a, just a person that you might put adjectives to, like she's sassy, she's strong, that type of thing they say about black women. But we can be also the face that launches a thousand ships. Come look for us. Mm. Come look for us. Find us. Coming up, it's a role that's close to Erica's heart, the Hulu series Wu-Tang, an American saga, hey. Wu-Tang, <laughs> in season three. I gotta get the scoop from Erica when we come back. He needs those lips. Do you know who I am, sugar? Yeah, um, you the lady who had these goons kicked out my door. Mm-hmm. I'm a lot more than that, funny man. I'm Lady Marlboro, and you'd know that if your vice was numbers and not. But today I'm here because I'm opening a club, the ladies' room. You like the name? Yeah, I like ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Music and comedy. And I need me a headliner. Welcome back. That was a scene from the hit Hulu series Wu-Tang, an American saga starring the multi-talented actress and activist Erica Alexander back with us. Okay, this series, I remember when you first started promoting it, the Wu-Tang Clan, the backstory. Come on. And I was like, well, is she producing it? And then I see you starring in it. People know the guys of Wu-Tang. I was just on a plane with Method Man. Shout out, Method Man. Come on, Meth. Um, Come on, Meth. <laughs> Rizza. We know the men, but the woman, the, the architect in so many ways, sure. Linda, it's, it's an incredible backstory. Did you know her story? No, I didn't know her story. Uh, Rizza is the um, visionary that uh, places them in these opportunities for series and branding and all these things. And he and Alex Say are the executive producers. So Linda is his mother. Yeah. And Linda had 11 children. 11. 11 children, there are four represented on this series. And Ashton Sanders plays the lead. And it's just brilliant, but she, he's a mama's boy. Yeah. He adored his mother, who I think um, um, he wanted to see. And so I, I asked her, I said, I think your, your son, your children want to see you. I don't know what you're about, but uh, just 
let me come in and be a vessel because I think well, they isn't want it phenomenal that that here you are the Wu Tang Clan? Come on, they are. A, 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 I mean, it, 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 <laughs> there is nowhere that you can go. Other countries, yeah. places that don't even speak Big. English. Big. And this is their American story. That's what yeah. I find so fascinating when we talk about people appreciating culture and appreciating yes. diversity. You can go anywhere on the planet and you say Wu-Tang Clan. Yes. And there's going to be a it reaction. Means something. That yeah. it means something. And yeah. it's not just music. Yes. And it's smart because you said the right thing, the American saga. They were smart to put that behind Wu-Tang, an American saga, like you might say the Waltons yes. or, you know, um, any other family show. To say that this is an American show and this is an American saga, but this is also part of the fabric of what makes the world great is that they're, they're um, of course, inspired by Wu-Tang and uh, karate movies yes. and Chinese culture. And that's what makes America great is that with building culture all the time, especially black people, by taking pieces from wherever they can find it. And that's what's Before you powerful. go, I do want to read, and look, I don't normally look at my notes like this, but I want to read this quote because I want to get it right. Sure. Before I let you go, these words, you said, our best Beethovens and Shakespeare's and Maya Angelou's are yet undiscovered, and that is my goal in life. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I adore you. I adore everything you represent. Thank you so much. And Thank congratulations you. Thank on you. this podcast, on this series. Thank you. Be sure to see season three, Wu-Tang, an American saga returns to Hulu next week. And you can find Erica's important podcast. I don't care what your background is, where you live, your race. This is a story that everyone should hear. Finding Tamika.